Hello, my friends. Welcome. My name is Derek A. Weens, president and founder of DareToBeForChrist.com and The Derek Project. I'm very happy to be able to share the word of God with you today. And I want you to know I love you with all of my God-given heart. And God loves you so much that you are the apple of his eye. And because you are so special, I am uh, only too privileged and honored to be able to share the word of God with you in kind, okay? And so I'm hoping that I will be able to give you some encouraging and inspiring news. And today's topic is the only heart you need. That's right, the only heart you need. Now, before we get started, let me just state outright, I will not be uh, teaching the doctrines of men, nor will I be worshiping God in vain. And secondly, as it says in Luke 4, 19, in Jesus' name, I will be preaching the gospel to those who are poor in spirit. In Jesus' name, I will be mending broken hearts. In Jesus' name, I will be recovering the sight of those who are spiritually blind. In Jesus' name, I will be preaching deliverance to those who are being held captive. And in Jesus' name, I will be setting at liberty those who are bruised. And glory be to God, my friends, that today, right here and now, by the grace and truth of the living God, I am able to proclaim to you, my friends, that the acceptable year of the Lord is now. Praise God and amen, okay? Now, let's get started. Now, the only heart you need. Now, why would that heart be the only heart that God would deem appropriate as the way, the truth, and the life to get to uh, heaven? And, you know, all the other hearts that are down here uh, have been down here uh, in all creation. Why weren't they ever good enough? Okay, so we're going to explore that, okay? Because as rational human beings, we have to, if given uh, the appropriate information, we can make the most well-informed well decision, okay? Because this type of, dis this type of uh, discussion, now this will affect the rest of our life for all eternity, okay? We're not just talking about what house we're going to buy, uh, who we're going to date tomorrow, what, what we're going to wear tonight on our date. Or will he call tomorrow? Now, this is the qu the big question for all time, okay? And so, now, we must give this some thought. And like I said before, when you're speaking about uh, people with who are living an alternative lifestyle, or people who are, have HIV or AIDS or any type of disease, or any anyone who is marginalized, who is not given the same leverage with regard to uh, information regarding their circumstances, okay? Because the word of God, it is engrafted and it is able to save your soul. It is powerful and living. The word of God will live on when you and me are in the ground. From dust we came and from dust we'll return, okay? And for those of you who don't believe, I understand. I was, with, I was right there with you. But you know what? Uh, here's my advice to you. If you, don't, if you don't believe God exists, then give him his breath back. Okay, because it says in Genesis that he breathed life into man. Okay, so if you don't if you don't like God, then give him his breath back and use your own. Okay, and then if you don't like his power, then give him the light that he's put put in you and give him his, give him his power back and use your own. And let's see how far you get on that. Okay, okay, because I'm here for you. Okay, so if you don't like this, talk to me. We can talk about it. Email me. Okay, I'm here for you. Okay, now let's get started. Now in the 14th chapter of John. Verse 6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Now, you have two roads. One straight, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And then you have a wide road, wider than all get out. And on that road, you got everybody fighting for their rights. I'm this, I'm that, you know, devouring one another, no tolerance for one another. Everyone's raping, pillaging, you know, uh, terrorizing one another and just total mayhem, chaos. And, um, and so the reason why it only takes one person such as Jesus is because all of our hearts, myself included, all of our hearts are subject to guile. There are uh, they're, they're, they're human hearts. Human hearts are covetous, avarice, they're greedy, they're jealous, they're envious, they're deceitful, dishonest, and it's just being it's human nature. And so I don't care if you're Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, Ted Turner, or Bill Gates. 
They, they can't take any of those, not a penny of those billion dollars with them when they die, okay? What you achieve while down here on this earth pales in comparison to what you believe before you leave this earth. And if you didn't know Jesus yesterday, I pray that you will meet him today because you will need him tomorrow, okay? Praise God. Trust. Because see, the day is coming soon when even all these Rich folks' money and their gold will be worthless. They'll be tossing out in the street. It ain't going to mean a thing. And look around you if you don't believe me. Look around you and see where we headed. Okay? Okay? So, now, Jesus is the only way because with that heart, and I can tell you firsthand, his heart is so big. It's so loving. It's so merciful. It's so gracious. It's so truthful and pure. It's deep as the ocean and wide as the sea, okay? And so, you know, on that road, that's really all you need because, which brings us to verse number two in John, first chapter, verse 12. But as many as received him gave he power to become the sons of God, even those who just believed on his name. Praise God. Jesus' name is so powerful. There's not a name in heaven, in earth, below or above that anyone can be saved by other than the name of Jesus in all of this earth, in heaven, below, up and down, all around its middle. And I'm here to tell you, his grace can reach the farthest regions, north, south, east, and west. His mercy can go find you in the deepest of situations, circumstances. I don't care what anyone has told you. I don't care what you've done. God is always willing and able and ready to meet you right where you are. And I'm praying that you will call upon him this day and ask him to reveal himself to you and tell him that you want to make him Lord and personal savior of your life. Trust me, it's the most uh, important decision and life-changing experience you will ever, ever make, okay? And you will be like me too. Why didn't anyone tell me life could be this fabulous before? Okay, praise God. Now I'm going to leave you with one more verse before I go. John, first chapter, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses. That's the Old Testament law. But you know, the one that they were using the uh, law to beat the folks over the head with that they were supposed to be protected and the widows and the orphans and the poor and the oppressed. Well, they was using the, the law to beat the folks down with and stepping on their necks, keeping them down, okay? But Jesus came by grace and truth, okay? And so he uh, was crucified and, and did it willingly because he knew we couldn't do it. And he did it because he loved you just that much, just like he loved me, okay? Now, he loves everybody, even though everybody don't love him, and we all don't love one another, but he loves, he did it for all mankind, okay? And so, with that being said, that grace and truth is what led me to you, okay? And it's not to be taken lightly, okay? It is good news, okay? Because see, anybody that know Christ, they, sh they ought to be able to tell you some good news. And they ought to be able to tell you what they were when that good news rescued them. Okay, when they was living a life that many would, are ashamed to speak of. But see, if you've been set free, you ought not be ashamed. I don't care what nobody. I don't care what you think about me. Okay, because my life has been redeemed. I'm look. I have been shown love and grace. I can care less what folks think about me. Okay, Jesus speaks for me. Okay, but now I have an obligation. To anyone who is gay, HIV, and AIDS. I want you to understand something. Do not get lost down here on this mortal stage we all plan on right now. Trust, everybody wants to go to heaven. That's why we all strive to do good. I don't care if you're looking at Ellen or whoever you're looking at. That's why we all try to do good. God gave us that capacity and he gave us those hearts. That's why we all do good. What we don't know for sure is how to go about reconciling with him. Voila, here I am. Just talk to him like I'm sitting there talking to you. But you have to do it with an earnest, sincere heart. Because he know all about you. I don't. Okay? He's the father. Okay? So you have to, I'm telling you, you know, he's waiting on you to call upon him. He's not judging you. Man is judging you, but he's not. Okay? So I want you to remember that. If I've said something that was encouraging or inspiring to you, I hope that you will uh, consider 
trading in your American dream for the eternal dream. Because down here on earth, I know that it may not have been easy for you. I know that people have treated you unkind and that, you know, you have given your all and you're really, you're really at the point to where now you just have given up. And you say, well, if they don't like me, screw them. And you have every right to feel that way. But I'm here to, as a voice crying in the wilderness, telling you, you, there is hope. Don't give up. And please, whatever you do, don't you harm yourself. And if you know someone who is gay or straight or may have HIV or AIDS or any other terminal chronic disease, would you please let them know that there is hope for them, that they don't, they're not in this battle alone. God is right there, ready and able to help them, to reveal himself to them and to heal them on the spot. If he speaks, it shall be done. That's all he got to do is speak and you shall live new through his son, Jesus Christ. I love you with all of my God-given heart, my friends. God bless you. And please, whatever you do, if you must have sex, if you must have sex, and if you get out there and you're messing around, protect yourself because this is why God wants you to understand how much he loves you. Everyone does not have your best interest at heart. And when people know that we don't know all there is to know about this life, they are ready to capitalize on you from the mistakes that you will make. And they've already made them, but they're in it to win it, and you are part of their game. So they don't really care anything about you. God does. And so that's why he wants you to figure it out for yourself. And please take me at my word. As you can see, I have nothing to gain. I'm not offering, I'm not asking for donations. I'm not asking you to send me any offering, any money. All I ask is for, for some time from your heart and from your mind that you may listen to the, these words of truth that I'm speaking. Because from one miracle to another potential miracle, which is you, if you should need one, if you need any help, deliverance, or healing, or anything, God is able, okay? Now, before I let you go, if you would, please pray the sinner's prayer with me, because I'm going to pray it too. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us to have this uh, Bible study through your son, Jesus Christ, the one who came full of grace and truth. And he came into the world, and the world received him not, Lord God, but he willingly went on through the cross, obediently following your command, pleasing you and not men, Lord God, and sacrificing and dying and being crucified and bled on the cross. And he was given our sins put upon him and buried as a sinner, Lord God, but he wasn't. And on the third day, you raised him, Lord God, and give, gave him all power in heaven and in earth. And now he is the one with the most powerful name in all creation, Lord God. And I hope that you will... Uh, Forgive the person that is watching this. Let them know how much you love them, Lord God, and reveal yourself to them should they ask, you know, that make you Lord and, Lord and Savior of their, of their lives, Lord God. And they may want to live now for you from this day forward and, 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 and renounce the life that they were living, Lord God, and make a new start, a new change, a, a, a new life in, in Christ Jesus, Lord God. And we thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. My friends, if you've prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. I love you with all of my God-given heart. And please go to my website, daretobeforchrist.com, and check it out. God bless you, and please be safe.